Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to another video. Like always, my name is William Leonard, and in this video, we'll talk about classic cars. I'm sitting in my 1950 Chevy Coupe Deluxe. I'm gonna be showing you guys uh, this car since I haven't really had time to make an official video about my car. I recently converted it to 12 volts. There's not that many videos out there where people show you the 12 volt conversion. So today I'm gonna show you guys how the car starts in cold, uh, when the car is cold. Keep in mind that I haven't started this car since uh, today's Monday, since Saturday, in a couple of days. So first of all, what we're gonna do is pump it twice. That's something that I do always before starting it. And if you guys didn't know, back in the 1950s, this cars came with push starts. So for uh, those of you guys that have brand new cars and think that the push start is something of the 21st century, you are completely wrong. So what we do, we put the key in the ignition and we press on this button. Just like that, the car is on. Now, if the car would have been six volts, the car by now would have not been on. I would have been battling with the fuel pump, the throttle, the um, carburetor. So one of the big advantages of switching the car from six to 12 volts is better start when the car is cold better lighting at night the lights are gonna be brighter and um, you can also add on any radios and and 12 volt accessories like phone chargers uh, speakers things like that I'm gonna be talking to you guys in a little bit more and showing you guys um, around the car as well as some safety features that I have added to the 1950s inside body so this is the engine and as you guys can see it is completely original with the exception like i mentioned earlier of the 12 volt conversion here's the alternator with a brand new belt because the one that it had originally was from the 1950s over there you have the voltage regulator box which is no longer in use because the alternator has a voltage regulator built inside and over here you have the 12 volts battery with a kill switch which is this right here and in a little bit I'm gonna be showing you guys how this works and where you can purchase this and for how much as you guys can see the engine is pretty smooth something that I recommend or that it is recommended to do it before you start this course every single day in the morning is check the water and the radiator as well as the oil level in the engine and also the brake fluid which I'm gonna be showing you guys in just a little bit so here's a quick view of the outside of the car like I mentioned it's a 1950 Chevy Starline Deluxe Sports Coupe. The difference between this one and the regular Styline is that the back window, the back passenger window, is smaller than the regular Chevy Starline Deluxe. Also, the roof on this car is much shorter than the one on the regular Starline Deluxe, which goes up to here. Back in the 1950s, this car was purchased by single men or business people who would go to business owners or stores selling different products. This car is completely original, unmolested. I purchased this car from the second owner, so I'm officially the third owner. The guy that I bought it from had the car for 35 years and he bought it in 1987 from the original owner who bought it in 1950 when it was brand new. The car has many accessories that are era correct 
to the 1950s. In a minute, I will be showing you guys which ones are those. As you guys can see, the paint job looks immaculate. Very shiny, no cracks in the paint, and in very good conditions. Some of the extras that the car has are the wraparound corners, which are these things right here. We can find those in the rear bumpers as well as in the front bumpers. The front visor is also another accessory, very common in 1950s cars. The white wall tires are 15 inches American classics. The guy that I bought the car from had gotten these tires but never used them so when i bought the car he gave them to me with the car these tires alone are 250 dollars a piece another accessory that's era correct to the 1950s is this chrome guard underneath the gas tank and i'm not i know many of you probably don't know what that is for but Back in the 1950s, you used to rest the, the, the pump on the gas while filling it up, on the gas tank while filling it up. So the fuel pump will rest on this chrome piece so that you wouldn't scratch on the metal or on the paint. This car, since it is the deluxe, it has many other extras like the wheel skirt, which is this cover that goes on top of the rear wheel. In my opinion, it adds up a very nice detail and very classic touch to the car. I have seen other cars without a back wheel skirt, and in my opinion, it looks like something is missing. The car is original from North Carolina where it spent its last 70 years since it was new in the 1950s and as you guys can see here I still have the original tag from the 1950s of course I was unable to keep the same tag in the rear since I was required by Florida State to have a Florida tag since the car was out of state Everything works on this car, with the exception of the, fa of the factory radio. Me personally would like to keep this car all original, and even though it has things that don't work, like the radio, I wouldn't want to fix it or replace it. As you can see, the chrome on the car looks very good, as well as the paint, like I mentioned to you guys earlier. Now, this car is three speed manual transmission. It's three on a column, or three on a tree, how they call it. And if you guys don't know how to drive these cars, I have uploaded a video on this channel teaching you guys how to ride how to drive three speed classic cars it's very simple as you can see the interior looks in very good conditions something that i would like to replace on the car is the carpet as you guys can see 
The carpets are also original from the 1950 and they are already showing its time and age. I have already ordered the carpet and this time I'm going to put them black. I ordered them from a company called OC Carpets. They're very cheap and good quality, going from $160 to $200 a piece, depending on which model you want. This car was garage kept in a barn since 1987 all the way to 2020 when I bought it. I am planning on keeping the, sh the seat or the bench seat original because they look in very good conditions. The headliner also looks very good as well as the door panels. Overall, the car is in very good conditions and it only has 45,000 original miles. I know we already talked about the engine compartment, but I wanna to talk to you guys about this right here. This is called a kill switch and you can buy this at AutoZone for $6 only. When you put it on, you want to make sure to put it on the positive side. At least that's what I did. A lot of people connect it to the negative side of the battery. I don't like doing that because if you have a shortage anywhere else in the car, the battery is going to drain because the positive cable is still connected to the battery. This is simple to work. You simply unscrew it and now you have cut all the power in the car. Also, adding another layer of security since people will not be able to start the car. When you're ready to drive it, you simply screw it right back on and now you have given the car the electricity that it needs in order to start and run. And well guys, there you have it, my 1950 Chevy Starline Deluxe Sports Coupe. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know with a big like. And if it is your first time passing by the channel, subscribe. And if you want to see more videos of my 1950 Chevy, hit, this like, hit the like button. We'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.